check out this episode of Cutting Edge Health, Preventing Cognitive Decline. The health coaches are so helpful because they can help people stick with it, keep optimizing, do the right things. Because this is complex, don't try to do everything at once. Start doing the right things, add keep optimizing and then keep tweaking to see, okay, can I maybe get things a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. Mm -hmm. We have people now who are now 10 years on this uh, trial or not that, not this particular mm -hmm. trial, but the protocol mm -hmm. that was, that we used in the trial, um, who have improved and stayed improved for 10 years. So again, that's unheard of. If you, uh, on the, on the drugs, if you get a little bit better, you go right back to declining again. So um, we're very excited that when you actually do the right thing on the protocol, you sustain your improvement because you're now attacking the causes of the decline. So let's look to the future. It's going to be exciting. I'm sure you see interventions on the horizon that we don't have quite yet, but you see them coming. Can you think of some? Oh my gosh, yeah, there's, there's so much. And we look all the time at where this is headed. How can we continue to enhance it? make it better. There's so much. So one of the things that we're already beginning to do um, is now to apply the same sort of approach because what it really says is when you have a neurodegenerative disease, and this has been the area of greatest biomedical therapeutic failure, it really is representing a mismatch between the supply of the system, of the neural subsystem, and the demand. You've got more demand than you do supply. So you're now involuting, you're losing, whether it's ALS, frontotemporal dementia, whether it's Lewy body disease, vascular dementia, Alzheimer's, what have you. So we're actually starting with macular degeneration. That's another great example where the demand outstrips the supply. And so part of this is going to be adapting it for the each has each subsystem has its own specifics so you need to do things a little differently for each of them the second thing is as you said there are new things that haven't been available before so one of the things is you can now get very rapid feedback looking at epigenetics and say okay have we addressed the appropriate methylation pathways, the appropriate detox pathways? Have we addressed these things? Now, we've been looking at these biochemically. What happens to your homocysteine? What happens to your C4A and TGF beta 1, which are markers of inflammation? What happens to these? What happens to the pathogens? Things like that. But we'll now be able to see the response more quickly. So you'll be able to say, ah, I'm on the right track or I'm on the wrong track.